Hi everybody. My name is Timothy Trespass and I'm a targeted individual. I was just thinking about <laughs> I was just thinking about all the times that I forget to be humbled. When I forget to be humble. You know, I fall victim for the, to the Whatever crap they taught us about me, 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 now, now, now. You know, it's just so hard sometimes. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, because I feel like uh, you know when you're victimized, you feel like you're justified, because you're not supposed to be victimized, you know, if you have a sense of justice, and of course that's one of the things they want to train out of us, is the response to victimization, you know, if we're not, if we have no sense of justice, fair play, then, you know, it's much easier to victimize people, and it's much easier to blame them for being that one's been deeply ingrained into our society. If you're a victim, it must be your fault. Either you did something wrong, or God doesn't love you, or something. But it must be your fault, because you've been victimized. And only victims get victimized, so it's your fault. I think that rationale comes from the fear <laughs> that we have. The fear that we don't want to admit, the one that all those big tough guys say, Who, me? Never! But deep down, most of us have that fear. We see it in the eyes of the victim. And it frightens us. Those of us who have compassion, we reach out. We have empathy, we share, we try to help, empathize make suggestions. Sometimes we just listen. Um, I don't know, does the victim have a right to feel upset because they've vic been victimized? I mean, I think it's a natural human reaction and it's being played upon. I think the fact that when one gets hurt, one has been trained usually to hurt back. That's what they seem to want in this society. Hurt, hurt back. Hurt first, before you get hurt. Uh, better safe than sorry. Better now than never. You know, I don't know. Whatever. But, um... Uh, I don't really want to hurt anybody. You know, the instinct is there, that animal... put my head under water and I'm going to fight to survive instinct, you know, that one. But, uh, I'm sure there's people who just take that breath of water and go, <laughs> that's that, you know. Um, it's supposed to be instinctual, it's supposed to be hardwired. Supposedly people, when they hang themselves, after they kick out the chair or whatever, they before they pass out as they're dangling there, they grab at the rope and they rip at it trying to get it off because it's such a horrible way to die. And if you don't actually go <coughs> crack your neck, um, the strangulation is pretty fucked up. But, um, I digress. Now that must have been a mind control moment. I'm sure they're having a blast sitting there at the control panel going, Hey, watch this! <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie, THX uh, something something something. It's a number. It's by, uh, I think it's by Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick. Now, if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. It's this mechanized future where everybody has a number, 
and they live together, and there's no love, and they are forced by law to take drugs so that they feel nothing for each other and do useless work and buy useless things that they then throw away. Um, and uh, now the Alzheimer's and the Morgellons, and the, the reset button has made me forget what I was talking about. Instant on lighting, instant Alzheimer's. Have you noticed that the numbers of people who are suffering from Alzheimer's and diabetes and respiratory failure and heart failure and all kinds of other problems is going up, 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 up? What do you think it is that makes our eyes one eye bigger than the other? Is that a genetic signature of the disease so that they can mark us with their New World Order plague? So they can tell us apart from the the ones that aren't affected, or the ones that tolerate the gene change better. I know there are different species of humans and non-humans on this planet, because I've seen them. I know that sounds crazy, but to anybody else who's seen them, they know, too. Uh, I guess that's all for now. Yeah, I think of this is like Flowers for Algernon. That's another book you should check out. Um, great story. They made me read. Freemasonic brain control. They make you read when you're in like second grade or something. Third grade to give it to all of the geniuses, I guess. <laughs> and, um,. I relate to that book, to that now. You know, it's interesting that they gave me that to read at such an early time. They gave me a lot of strange books to read in my elementary school. In fact, all of my school has been, except for maybe St. Anne's, has been, in one way or another, experimental. Uh, which makes me, in one way or another, experimental. However, I didn't realize that. I thought I was a normal human being. You know, I thought I was a person. Uh, corporate fiction. I thought I was a sovereign individual, a man on the land. But, uh... Yeah, the one eye bigger than the other thing is really strange. And the loss of collagen, and the change of the features, and uh, the stuff in the eyes. The windows to the soul. I don't know, man. Uh, I try to be a nice guy. I try to be friendly and polite and intelligent. And, you know, I got a lot to say. I can't remember much of it anymore. I tried to have a life. And for some reason, a bunch of people stepped in and said, no. Although I think this has been going on a lot longer. I don't know, it's just, um, I really do think that the targeted people are the ones who have the special gifts, and that's who they want to get rid of, because that's who they're frightened of, the people who know the truth, and I think if all the targeted people look at each other and look at themselves, they'll find that they're more than they thought they were, despite the victimization. Thank you for listening. Thank you for praying and thinking and commenting and caring. And I do the same for all of you. God bless you all. Take care.